With this little bit of academics out of the way, let's actually dig into a couple of the important points that uh, can become important whether you're studying for the test or when it comes time to actually do some domain or forest upgrades. The first of which that we want to talk about has to do with that schema extension process. And I have no idea what the level of, of testing will be on this. It's just really nice to, to know what the schema extension process can be, because if you don't know this, things can get a little squirrely when you actually walk into that, um, that, that change control board meeting and have to prove that you know what you're doing when it comes time to extend the schema. Now, one of the things I will tell you is that throughout this, we already have a Windows Server 2012 R2 environment. We, we've built this environment here, so we're not going to see the actual upgrade process, but I just want to show you a couple of the tools that you would use to get through those five steps. One of the first things I'll show you here is uh, if I bring up, let's, let me just bring up a command prompt here, and I want to go to uh, the uh, Windows System32, System32 AD prep folder. I believe that's there. And I also want to note just uh, for a second here that I'm on the server DEN-DC1. This machine has already been added to the domain and it is also currently a domain controller. So because of that, we're going to see some content here in this AD prep location, not the least of which is a whole bunch of these files that end with an LDF extension. These LDF files are what the AD prep tool does or uses to actually go through a schema extension. And in fact, you can you can take a look at any of these files. Let me open one, open one up in Notepad, sch69.ldf. You'll see they're human readable. And here you can see that the distinguished name corresponds with the, 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 the area in Active Directory that we're going to change, which is this location here. The AD prep tool will actually replace DC equals X with whatever your domain name will be, like company.pri, company.pri, for example. So these are designed to be sort of universal that can be changed with this little X that occurs here. For each of these changes that occur, we get a change type. So it's a schema modification in this case. We are adding a value, default hiding value, and we're setting that uh, value to false. Same thing, uh, setting this to false in a different location. Uh, here is the schema configuration. If I take a look at a different uh, schema file here, SCH68, I'll see a whole variety of, well, of course, if I type it there correctly, SCH68, if I'll see a variety of different changes that occur, one for each of these different LDF files. This, is a, this one is an attribute here that says, OK, user allowed to authenticate to. This attribute is used to determine if a user has permission to authenticate to a service. All the different as attributes associated with this thing that we're adding into the Active Directory database. Each one of these will correspond with one of the locations that exists in the database. And the tool that you can use to actually see what those are is adsiedit.msc. If I take a look at ADSI edit and I just connect it up to the default naming context, you can drill down through the actual Active Directory database to find where what these con configurations are, what's in the containers, and what might be changed as part of these LDF files. The LDF files are executed in order. So SCH68 is going to get executed before SCH69, and so on and so on. So these can give you an idea of exactly what Microsoft intends to do when you go about running that AD prep command. I tell you this because it is very handy to pro just provide these files to some user or some individual who may be requesting them. If you go to CD, Windows, System, System32, AD prep, and just copy and paste the contents of these LDF files into some location, that person that's asking you, what in the heck is your, your schema upgrade doing? Well, this gives you exactly what that upgrade is going to accomplish. Now, the neat part about the AD prep tool is that it kind of obfuscates all the content that exists here with these LDF files. And if I go to, let's see, the AD prep tool is not found in this location. Nope, uh, it's on the D drive. Uh, if I go to the Windows 2012 R2 DVD media and take a look at the sources AD prep location, uh, CD sources, CD AD prep, I believe, CD. Oops, actually, uh, support, sorry, support.adprep location. That's where I'll find the adprep uh, command, adprep.exe. Let me just show you adprep with the slash question mark switch here. So you can take a look at what it actually intends to accomplish. adprep, again, is a tool that is required to extend the Active Directory schema, and it consumes those files that we were taking a look at just before. Now, there are actually four different switches that you can incorporate with ADPREP, and they have to more or less be run in order, although some of them are optional. 
If we take a look at, let me again grab my pen here, if we take a look at some of these switches, I can tell you first that the very first switch that needs to be run is this one here called Forest Prep. Forest Prep is run by an enterprise admin somewhere in the forest to update the, the forest schema. And once that forest schema is updated, the next thing is to actually update each domain. That needs to happen on a domain controller in each domain in the forest. So if you've got some distributed domain controllers, well, you've got some work to do to get to those domain controllers and run the domain prep command. You can run the domain prep GP prep if you want in order to update permissions on group policy objects. And then optionally, you can run the RODC prep on any domains that will host RODCs. Generally a good idea for you to run this on domains that you plan on hosting RODCs. So it's not necessarily a required thing, but again, you're only going to run this if you plan on using RODCs in that domain. Run your forest prep first, run your domain prep next, and then optionally run your RODC prep if you need to. These in this order are what you will accomplish in order to extend the schema.